Marie was the kind of person that when she walked into a room, everybody would know Marie was there. It is now three years since Marie Vitali was diagnosed with early onset okay. Alzheimer's disease. She's accepted her condition okay. with a brave face. I just don't feel like crying anymore. <laughs> so we have to move onward. You need to get some forks out of the drawer, darling. Okay. Because we're going to use forks for lunch, okay? okay? I try and engage her as much as I can in, in doing things five, with six, us seven. as a family, giving her the cutlery and saying, honey, will you go set the table? And invariably, two or three minutes later, she will walk back into the kitchen with all the cutlery in her five, hand six, saying, seven. Mama, what did you want me to do with this? Remember Marie driving? Sorry. Lost in her own neighborhood? These days, Marie no longer drives. Inside her brain, like others with Alzheimer's, a protein called beta amyloid is building up. It's preventing the information from flowing between those nerve cells or neurons. Initially, the body tries to repair it. But unfortunately, the brain can't solve this problem. There's, being, there's too much being made or not enough cleared away, and it just can't take care of the problem. And over time, the neurons will actually say, all right, you know what, we're spending too much time and too much energy on this problem. We can't fix it. Stop everything and give up. And the cells will actually um, tell themselves to kill themselves. They'll uh, initiate a programmed cell death called apoptosis. Harvard-trained neuroscientist and best-selling author Lisa Genova knows more than what's happening chemically inside the brain. While she was researching Still Alice, a novel about a Harvard professor afflicted with early-onset Alzheimer's, she sought out patients to learn what they were thinking as they struggled to retain their memory. Some people say it feels like suddenly they're playing a game where they don't understand the rules and they're really trying to figure it out in the moment, and it's baffling to them. It's terrifying. They told Lisa their minds are active. So you walk into the kitchen, and you think, what did I come in here for? And so you think, OK, I'm in a room where I could get food. Am I hungry? Was I looking for someone? Yes, with Alzheimer's, you do the exact same thing. The problem is you don't have access to the same information that you did before Alzheimer's. As we interviewed Marie Vitale, you could see that process at work. But um, am I going off track? Am I answering the question? That's a lot of garble I just said, didn't I? In addition to memory loss, Alzheimer's can affect the ability to process sensory information, such as hearing. Babble is not good for me. It's just too much information, and I... Uh, in a crowd, sometimes I'm just sitting there quietly with my eyes closed because I just can get enough noise here. I don't need any more. <laughs> That's because her brain doesn't remember to ignore irrelevant noise. Thank you. Is this loud out here to go? Sound perception issues are also a concern for country music legend Glenn Campbell. He shared his Alzheimer's diagnosis with fans prior to his world tour. Um, we just wanted the audience to be aware, and, and you know, if he relies on the teleprompter a lot, it's because he needs that prompting to remember the lyrics, and occasionally he might get lost in a song. What am I doing on this one? You play the solo. Yeah, just play something. Right. Ah, I think we'll let you play it, honey. It's deposition. But I'll do it. Wait a minute, I gotta get Keep this Keep your tape on. Dad. I thought I was supposed to go all the rest on this one. Dad? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It doesn't happen I, I often, but every now and then. Well, I, and I, now, see, I get lost in a song. That's because I'm playing it and I'm not, and I can't, it doesn't matter what a singer play. Since we've gone public, the fans just give him so much love and support. It's really been a great encouragement to us. Yeah. And it makes the evening really, really fun because sometimes they just cheer even more when he, he does have a mishap, you know, because when he gets back on, 
They're just like, yay! It's like rooting for somebody, you know? <laughs> so, I hadn't, it's been I a hadn't blessing. I made a mistake in 40 years. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now you're making up for it now, right? All those yeah, I'm making years of perfect shows. With family members backing him up on stage, the man famous for such hits as Wichita Lineman, Rhinestone Cowboy, and Gentle on My Mind, now takes a stoic approach to his fate. Well, you come to realize that it's going to be there, you know, live with it. I, I guess that's, that's with anything, you know, if you get your finger cut off, you got to live with it. If only there were a pill to stop the ravages of Alzheimer's. But the arsenal of drugs available today is limited. They're billion dollar uh, medicines. Uh, and the vast majority of families will tell you they don't notice any difference. I think for the most part, those medicines are junk. So researchers are working on the next generation of treatments. Coming up, we'll find out how this woman has become a source of motivation for those scientists.